My name is Robert M. Wood, and I go by Dr. Bob these days. I have a degree in aeronautical engineering from the University of Colorado, and then I subsequently got a PhD in physics from Cornell. And I went right into McDonnell Douglas as a young engineer and stayed with McDonnell Douglas for 43 years, graduating basically through the various management steps and wound up in charge of various aspects of our research and development programs, including the last one was the space station program. So that's my background. That I had a story that I could tell to my management. Since, since I concluded that the UFOs were real, one, one day when I was driving to work, I said, well, wow, there's no other solution. They're clearly real, they're clearly extraterrestrial, and they work somehow. And I think we ought to figure out how they work, because I wouldn't want to be the last aerospace company to discover gravity control. I think we ought to be the first. So I took a briefing to my management, and my management was very sympathetic at that particular time for, for some new creative ideas. They didn't have much of a basic research program, and I offered a, a very modest project to look into this problem. So we did some things like seeing whether we could change the speed of light by a, a large axial magnetic field. And we hired Stan Friedman, actually, to use the UFO literature as a basis for clues as to what technology might be involved. And the government has never really said what it's been credited as saying, that there are no flying signs. They really word their press releases very carefully. The press takes it that last step. Uh, I think every government in the world has three major problems along these lines with regard to UFOs. One, they'd like themselves to figure out how it works, because it makes a great weapons delivery system. It makes anything worth flying look pretty naive by comparison. Two, you'd want to make sure that the other guy doesn't figure out how to duplicate their behavior, because then you have a defense problem. If he's got something that flies like these things, we got a problem, because we can't handle it. And three, perhaps most important, a kind of philosophical political problem, as soon as it becomes obvious to the people on the planet, and widely accepted that flying saucers are real and from off the Earth, there's going to be a push for a view of man as earthlings, the people on this planet. Instead of I'm an American or Russian or Chinese, I'm an earthling. There is no government that wants its citizens to owe their primary allegiance to the planet as opposed to the country. Nobody wants to give up their power. You were a policeman, weren't you? Yeah, how'd you know? I must confess, I'm a bit psychic. Were, there were other things as I became more familiar with the literature that I gradually developed an opinion on. Uh, one was the opinion that the psychic communication was always a clue and was usually present. As I remember the one case that particularly impressed me of some guy in Mexico said he came around, he was hiking, he came around a corner and there was this huge alien with a, a device around his belt. And so the guy touched the belt, turned a knob and all of a sudden he was hearing what the alien was thinking directly just like that. And say, well, you know, that's what we need is a device like that. All you have to do is figure out how it works. And it should be straightforward once we study that. That's why when, when, when I was in the vault, I was working with a guy who turned out, you may even heard, have heard of him, uh, his name is Jack Houck, um, who had a good deal of interest in studying anomalous things that had to do with the mind. And so he had been looking at the subject of remote viewing. He invented the PK party with Colonel John Alexander, and whom you may know, well, whom people may know of. And uh, Jack got me interested in uh, doing, becoming familiar with, with remote viewing. And so I met Hal Putoff when he was working at SRI. And Hal told me about their program there. And, and one thing led to another that we did a little uh, coordinate remote viewing program of our own. And it turned out that Mr. McDonald became aware of this fact that we were doing this in, in the vault. Uh, or at least we were thinking about doing it. And he called me into his office one day when I was back at St. Louis on a business trip. And I thought, you know, I'm about to, <laughs> about to get really chastised. But he talked to me for two hours and said he was excited to find out there was somebody who was interested in the subject because, you know, he, he named his airplanes the Phantom and the Voodoo because he believed in that stuff. Uh, and the Banshee, I think. There were maybe four names. And so he gave us $20,000 to study this coordinate remote viewing 
covertly in the vault. All right, all right, I'll put it in the vault. Oh, please, it's in the vault.